I'm Josh Stevens, and I'm doing my comparison G genome project on Wolbachia pipiensis. Wolbachia pipi pipiensis are endosymbiotic bacteria capable of altering host sex populations to have more females than males. So I decided to do a comparison analysis of their genes and core genomes. I began by downloading raw data from the ENA, which can be seen in the bottom of table one. And I used Trimomatic to remove lab added sequences from the raw data down here. The raw data was then assembled using spades, which creates long contigs from short sequence reads. Genes in these contigs were then annotated using Proca down here. Right? Yeah. I then downloaded a reference genome from the NCBI and compared one of my genomes from the ANA using QOS. And this figure up here is the comparison of base pairs in their sequences. It clearly shows there's contamination as there's 170 million base pairs compared to the 1.2 million base pairs seen in the reference genome. So next I started looking into what could be the contamination. Down here we use GenomePeak to determine what products, what other DNA could be relevant in their in the DNA download. In figure six, there's Homo sapien DNA, which is likely from the researcher who was conducting the research project. And in figure five, there is an array of DNA from other bacteria and other food that their host might have been digesting. Next, I looked at the 16S gene, and I ran a blast search on all of the ones from the NCBI and ENA. Down here is a table, and it shows all of the top results in the middle section. And some of them, we have different hosts down here, and we have uh, fungus down here as well. From one of the uh, Drosophila flies was a fungus-eating fly, so it's likely that the Wolbachia had some of that in it. Uh, next, I did a comparison of the core genes in it. And I used Rory to make this Fandago graph, which shows little, little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? little similarity in the genomes themselves. So next, I looked at the total gene sizes, co total core gene sizes, in different small groups of these strains. Now, up here in the strains 7 through 10, they were only, oh my god, only 700 gene, core genes of the 1600 prevalent. Down at the bottom, in strains 3 through 1, there were 955 genes, core genes prevalent. When all of them were mixed together, there were only four total core genes combined. Meaning that there was, there's lots of diversity in the Wolbachia pipienta species. Then, to determine if, by standards, this was a species, we looked at an ANI calculator. The ANI calcula calculator graph is here, and the threshold for, to be considered a species, typically is at 95%. Identic, identical nucleotide identity. Most of these strains were under the threshold, except for up to strain four, these were all similar. 10 through seven were all similar. And strain six was a different one. Strain six was from a nematode host, while the others were all from arthropod hosts. So it's odd that the nematode was in the middle of the phylogenetic tree, but it's the least similar of the bunch and is one, one way these could be classified as different species. Um, now, in conclusion, Wolbachia strains are highly diverse and can be looked at in different, as a different species in some ways, but more research needs to be done to conclude this. One way to do this would be looking at branch length on phylogenetic trees, and this was suggest suggested by Jonathan Eisen down here. Looking at branch length shows us longer branches were 
in, were in lineages that evolved more rapidly, and shorter branches are lineages that evolved slowly. These shorter branches could be considered the same species, while longer ones may not. So that's where this data can be gone next.